Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us on another episode of Calvary Conversations. Like always, my name is Mariah, and I'm here with my big brother, Pastor Morgan Roders. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> so today we have a very special guest. This guest is in studio with us right now, and she is my sister in love, which means that she is Pastor Morgan's beautiful wife, Ravel. <laughs> <laughs> we call her Veli, so we're going to call her Veli, but. Mm -hmm. There's Ravel. Thanks so much for joining us. Yes, thank Thanks, you. Phil. Thank you for having me. Well, we are excited to right talk here. about. <laughs> yeah, Morgan gets to look right across <laughs> sure at across. his bride. And today we're going to be talking about relationships. We're going to be talking mm -hmm. about courtship. We're going to talk about um, boundaries. We're going to talk about accountability and all that fun stuff. And who would be the better couple? to do it than Morgan and Valley. So <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> thank you. Yes. And you guys, how long have you been married now? Uh over a year and a half. So yeah. almost, almost two, two in June. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> a couple couple months less than that. But yeah. Yep. It's so, been good. Yes. It's been it's blessed. gone by fast. Mm -hmm. Yep. So this is gonna be a conversation. So we're gonna just share their love well, we're gonna share. I guess I'm a third wheel, but they're gonna share their love <laughs> you, story you know and I'm gonna walk too. them through <laughs> it. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. You've been so, with us the whole way. Yeah. So it's true. Have. It's mm -hmm. true. So we're going to have Morgan pray for us before we get started. Yeah, let's pray. So. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you, Lord, uh, for what you've done, God, because I know that um, just when we talk, Val and I, we know that without you, mm -hmm. it would have just uh, fallen to pieces. And mm -hmm. yeah, maybe we could have made it work and things like that, but. It's so much better your way, God. Mm -hmm. And I know that we're not perfect, but God, I pray that um, we can be an example to others. And I know that we're young in marriage, but just like your word says, we, we don't have to despise our youth or anything like that. So I pray that you give us the words to say, the, the wisdom to share, and that you would help us to be an encouragement to those who um, are in a relationship or who, who are thinking about getting into a relationship, mm -hmm. God, that we can all be led by you because yes. uh, like Vel, Vel and I, our relationship isn't over. We're still trying to uh, live godly lives and mm -hmm. to love one another the way that you have loved us. And so I pray, God, that as we have this time, as we discuss, as we um, talk about what you have done and, and the testimony of your goodness and your grace, I pray, Father, that there'll be many more testimonies of your goodness, mm -hmm. many more testimonies of uh, just the love story, God, mm -hmm. that it's you. You're mm -hmm. the one that when we focus on you, when we place our love in you, God, you put everything else into place. And so I thank you for that. Thank you that you're in control. Mm -hmm. And we just pray that you'll fill us with your Holy Spirit right now, yes. that you would lead us, that you would uh, just direct our tongue um, all of our tongues, God, mm -hmm. and that you would help us to say the things that you want us to say. And I just pray, God, that for those who maybe are struggling or those who um, are too afraid to maybe get married or to make that commitment, that they would just go to you. That even before just trying to read all these books or try to listen to a bunch of people mm -hmm. or even before they try to listen to us, that they would go to you that they would ask what you want for their lives and that they would do things according to your timeline. And so I thank you, God. And I, it's just it's just such a joy to see what you are doing continually, God. And so I just pray that in all our relationships, whether married or whether we're just uh, friends at church or whether, you know, even with our parents, our siblings, God, that we would have godly relationships, that you would be the center of them all. So we give you this time, we give you our lives, and it's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> all right, so before we get started, I just want to say, so Belly, she just turned 22, so she's a, a young buckaroo, <laughs> but yep. I look at her as my big sister because you really <laughs> have helped me through a lot. When I had my breakup, Christ through you was able to encourage me and spur me because, yeah, you really are just someone that's humble and broken before God. Mm. And we definitely are going to see that as you share your testimony mm. and your guys' story. So 
I'm excited. And for you guys to know, this is really encouraging if you guys have young daughters or or sons or honestly anyone who's in a relationship, wanting to be in a relationship, who's married, that this is going to be really powerful because I know that Christ speaks in and through you, Val. So Mm -hmm. it's going to be great. We didn't even have a lot of prep for this, but we we like talking to each other. So it's going to be good. All right. So first question for you is, Val, can you tell us the very first time you laid eyes on Morgan (laughs) Roeders? When was it? What did that look like? Yes, I would love to share that. So the first time that Morgan and I were together in the same area (laughs) or venue, (laughs) uh, venue really, yeah, Yeah. um, it was June 2017, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, Our friend's mutual friend's wedding. So we didn't know each other, but we both knew the friend that was getting married. Mm -hmm. And the Rotors were invited, and me and my sister were invited. And I actually don't remember you too much. I Mm -hmm. do remember that you had long hair and you had a beard. And I was (laughs) like, who is that guy with long hair? Look like Jesus (laughs) back then. Yeah. (laughs) I don't, yeah, I don't remember you too much from then, but mm-hmm. I remember the first time that I really noticed you was when my sister invited me to church. I wasn't going to church um, for a while then. I could, I had kind of just um, given up on church and just my dad stopped going. So I was like, oh, I should stop going too. And mm-hmm. I thought that churches were all clicky and judgmental. And so I just thought I would seek God on my own and it I got weird (laughs) real fast um but anyway so uh sorry my sister she invited me to church and um and I remember um coming into service and um the song that I remember um you guys were playing came to my rescue Mm -hmm. and I remember I seeing you Morgan and I was (laughs) like at the time I was in another relationship and I I said to myself and I thought I was, um, you know, stuck in that relationship, like I couldn't get out. And I remember saying, man, if I could have chosen, mm-hmm. I would have chosen him. Mm-hmm. And so that was the first moment. And I, I really noticed you. And mm-hmm. back to the song, Came to My Rescue, uh, it says, I called, the r- lyrics are, I called, you answered, and he came to my rescue. And I just want to be where you are. And I felt that was like the first time God uh, really spoke to me that I, re- that I remember as a, an adult, mm-hmm. um, I, he had spoken to me to other, uh, other times, but this was like, come back to me, like it's mm-hmm. time. And so that was all kind of, um, wrapped up together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And then Morgan, can you tell us what your <laughs> first time <laughs> seeing Val? Cause you remember yeah. that wedding. Yeah. I saw her at the wedding. Uh, I was going to the bathroom actually, and <laughs> I was waiting. There's like a line. It was just a single bathroom, and so she came out singing, <laughs> and you guys know that she's always singing. She writes songs, and voice. yeah, beautiful voice and worship leader. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so that was my first like time I saw her, and I didn't really see her much after that um, at the wedding, but then I saw her at church, and mm-hmm. then yeah, yep. And another fun question I know everyone's asking. <laughs> so what? <laughs> so I know, like everyone's me. <laughs> I'm very interested. I'm a little schoolgirl. So <laughs> but um, I just wanted to ask, so what, if you had in mind, like, what was it that you have always thought of, like, your husband would one day be? Can you share yes. with the listeners what that would be? I would love to share that. <laughs> and I actually brought my, one of my first journals. First journals. <laughs> um, my first mm-hmm. real journal. Uh, I had to find it. I was like, God, I was on the way here. I was like, God, please. Or before I left, I was like, God, if it's your will, please help me find it. And I, we were moving into a new place. So we have a bunch of boxes everywhere. And I just lifted open this box and it was Aww. right in there. So I was like, thank <laughs> you, Jesus. God. So I actually wrote this when I was in the relationship with the other person. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't writing with them in mind. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is for someone else. I don't know who it is yet, but this is for someone else. Um, so I'll read that. It's not too long, but um, it just shows kind of the importance of writing things down, especially when God has spoken something to you Mm -hmm. um, or a verse or a a dream or something like that. It's important to write it down. We quickly forget. We quickly forget. That's why I write things down all the time Mm -hmm. because I forget all the time. So anyways, it's it's titled Future Husband, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, July 10th, 2017, Mm -hmm. which is right when I started coming to church a little little later. That was Um, a month. After that wedding, I saw you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay. It says, I pray he seeks the Lord before me, yearns to know more about God, loves to worship Jesus, and isn't afraid of what others think. 
is selfless, gracious, generous, understanding, strong in faith, challenging, intellectual, not self-seeking, captures all that is love, 1 Corinthians 13. Loves the Lord above all else, including me and all of his possessions, teaches and instructs our children in the way that they should go. <laughs> this is so special. <laughs> I have read this. <laughs> I didn't Aww. read this today. Um, is a godly example to all future children, my family, his family, all he comes in contact with me. Did I mention loves Jesus with <laughs> all his heart, soul, and mind? <laughs> Matthew 20, 20. 37, and then it says more to come. <laughs> <laughs> and then it says, and it says Morgan Rotors. <laughs> Morgan Rotors, yeah. I knew his name. But I want to share something really quick with that too. Uh, when I was a youngin, <laughs> I am a youngin, but when I was really youngin, <laughs> like a middle schooler, elementary schooler, I was at a sleepover with all my friends and um, they, we were talking about future husbands and, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. And they were like, so... I feel um, like only girls do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a girl thing. Well, about husbands, of course. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Um, yes. But I remember we asked, we were talking about that. And I, it was my time, to, my turn to share. And I said, I want him to have brunette, brunette hair, green eyes, a beard, and to be a worship leader. <laughs> and I remember <laughs> when I was... Uh, little I would see this this like dream this vision of this man who I knew was my husband and he had brown hair beard he had a guitar in hand and they were just like <laughs> oh we got him right there <laughs> so just insert guitar yeah he's a worship I'll, I'll leader. talk about that more later <laughs> but yeah. yeah so I love that <laughs> well I know and it's good for people to hear that because I know a lot of people you know sometimes they they go just with what they feel right. Mm -hmm. They go by feelings of, I just want a companion. I just want someone to be with me. And right. You were going through a hard time, you know, with your dad being mm -hmm. an alcoholic and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that was difficult for your family and your mom. Yeah. Mama Clet, she, mm -hmm. you know, had difficulties with, is that when did she have, I mean, you don't call it a seizure. It's a brain, yeah, tumor, brain hemorrhage. Brain hemorrhage. Uh, that was, I always get the year wrong, but I think it was 2010 or 2012. Mm -hmm. I was in seventh grade, so yeah. how how old you are then? Mm -hmm. But she had her first brain hemorrhage, and she was super healthy. And yeah. we're like, "What's happening?" Anyways, it was a like near death experience. God totally it was total miracle surgery. She wasn't supposed to survive. She wasn't supposed to be able to talk or move really, um, but God uh, just worked that all out. And then she got uh, stage four brain cancer. Around that whole time is when my dad really started digressing because yeah. he kind of had to play the role of mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And so that was really hard on all of us. And I didn't really realize how hard it was on us because I kind of just was kind of pushed when you're a kid, I feel like you don't really realize it. Mm -hmm. But when you get older then the stuff that you've bottled up, whether, I mean, if you, if you haven't dealt with it properly, if you haven't dealt with it with Christ, with Jesus, then, um, then it will come up at some point yeah. and mm -hmm. it affects the way you think. So, yeah. 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 And you grew up, right, a perfectionist, wanting to please your dad, wanting to mm -hmm. please others. And mm -hmm. you're a beautiful artist. You're amazing mm -hmm. at that. And so you mm -hmm. do all your work, like, very well. And I, and the thing is, is Val has always been, like, I guess not in church, but you knew about God. You went mm -hmm. to Christian school yeah. and stuff like that. So you were religious, right? You had yeah. a form of godliness, but... Mm -hmm you weren't really going to God in those times of need. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that's for a lot of people out there is that they can act godly, but mm -hmm. they deny the power that can <clears throat> change them and says from such people turn away. So yeah. um, mm -hmm. can you tell us when was it like when you got into that relationship that was, that wasn't good, right? He was, he was Catholic. He wasn't even a Christian. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us just a little bit, of what that looked like because mm -hmm. you were in that relationship even when you were at the church mm -hmm. and so can you tell us mm -hmm. just a little bit about Maybe the that? importance of like being equally yoked yeah like what exactly. that means so that's yeah that's good yeah sounds good i kind of forget the time meaning of everything but mm -hmm. i think it was 2016 i was going into junior year of high school or senior year yeah i think junior year of high school so and you do not encourage dating in high school because yeah. you're not ready to be married. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't do that. First tip. Um, and I, I remember as a kid, I would, I, I had this dream of not dating till I was ready to get married, and I thought that would be not in high school. Mm. Um, I also remember um, watching people around me, uh, friends and family that would they fell in 
like purity wise. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, I'll never do that. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to be like that. Mm-hmm. I'm a good Christian girl and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I also remember um, my eighth grade graduation, my my principal, she gave me the the character award of pure of heart. And I remember um, kind of from then on, I had I, I kind of had this pressure I put on myself. I have to stay pure. I have to stay pure. I have to stay pure. And I have to look good. Everybody thinks I'm this perfect, pure girl, goody two shoes or whatever. Mm. But um, I let my guard down and I also was doing things in my own strength. And as we know, in our own strength, we're mm. weak. And so around... The summer of 2016, um, my friend put my picture up on her Snapchat or something on our story. I don't know how everything is now, but that's what it was when I had Snapchat. But anyway, she put me on her story and this guy um, saw me and he said, who is she? Give me your number. Like, And she asked me, can I give him your, num- your number? And I said, sure, why not? You know, I'm just going to tell him no. Like I tell all the other guys, you know, I, I'm strong. Just why not? So he texts me and, um, he, there's something different about him. He's the most persistent person I had ever met. And, um, usually all the guys at my high school, not all the guys, but the few guys that liked me at my high school, they would text me and I just told them, Hey, I'm not interested. I'm not ready today. I'm too busy with school. I just, I'm not ready for that. And they said, okay, cool. Uh, they were sad or they would want to just be friends. So it was very Mm lighthearted. Like Mm -hmm. they were very um, easygoing about it, I guess, but he was not. And I remember there are a few things, um, that, that w- were said to me, like, uh, just that were very forceful. And I remember saying like, we're, we're unequally yoked. Like, you know, I didn't really know what Catholic was back then. Um, but I just, just from the way he was talking, it just didn't seem like we're equally yoked. We didn't have the same values. And, um, but still, I was interested in a weird way. I think it was, uh, that's, I not I think, it was lust. And also, it was a mixture of lust and also wanting attention. Mm-hmm. And wanting to feel valued and loved. And um, he gave that temporal feeling to me for a time. And so, um, I just remember I kept letting my guard down, kept compromising Mm -hmm. um so the first compromise was continuing to talk to him rather than just shutting him down right away and I remember Mm -hmm. I tried to but he said no you will be my girlfriend stuff Mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. and I just kept and I could have easily shut it down I could have Mm -hmm. um but I was uh deceived and uh let myself be deceived Mm -hmm. by making those compromises um and that's why God's word says to not be unequally yoked Mm -hmm. I don't know where it is um, in the Bible right now, but mm. is it um, for, for Second Corinthians or I, I'll find it. Okay, we can. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll. I'm sure we'll bring it up later. Mm. But that's why God says to not be unequally yoked. And that picture there is like two ox, ox, oxen, <laughs> two oxen. Ox, yeah. oxen or ox, oxen, oxen. <laughs> they're in a field, and um, if they're unequally yoked, they're just gonna, you know, one is gonna be yeah. moving this <laughs> way. <laughs> what? Oh, no, nothing. I said meander. <laughs> yeah, meandering. Yeah, That's 2 a Corinthians 6, 14. Second Not Corinthians. be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Yes. Um, it's like God's word is true or something. It is. Like it, is. it is so true. Um, and it just leads to destruction. It leads to an unplowed field. It leads to lots of destruction and pain and death and sin. And so that's kind of where it yeah. all started. Yeah. So. And... With that too, this is why we want to be sharing this because if you feel like you're in a relationship where they're telling you and forcing you to do things that you don't feel right about, but you want that love and attention and you feel like, oh, like I need to give them this or also get mad, right? Mm Because that's what you experience. They get really mad and angry and they're very forceful. If they're pursuing you, that's not godly pursuit. Mm -hmm. That is lust. They Mm -hmm. are, that, that isn't like, oh, they're pursuing me because they're, they're just, good godly men that are pursuing Christ to me and know they want your body. They want to be with you in sexual wrong ways. Mm-hmm. And that's what Vel was exposed to. And so I think a way that you could tell the difference is if you set boundaries and they're like, Oh, that's like, they're mm-hmm. glad, you yeah, know, because, yeah, that's a good because that's the thing. It's like, you know, you guys want to be together, right? Mm-hmm. If you like <laughs> each other, then it's like, well, 
we need to put boundaries before exactly. we get married because we could easily fail and mm-hmm. we're not married yet. So there's, we don't have that, uh, that commitment yet. It doesn't matter what people say and stuff like, Oh, I'm committed to you. No, like you don't until you're married. Yeah. You, know, mm-hmm. you don't know. Yeah. So that's what I think. Well, Vel did that one time. Um, she said, because we we're far along in our relationship and everything. And we we're, I think we were engaged at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it was she was January like, before we got married. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she said, Hey, let's just pray and kind of fast from one another in the sense like attention and, and spending time with one another for a day or two and, and just pray and ask if God really wants us to be married. Yeah. And, and you know, we were like, okay, let's do that. And mm-hmm. at first it could be like, what? Like, wh- why are you asking this? Mm-hmm. Like, where are you engaged and where are you have been together? So are you thinking about leaving or anything? Mm-hmm. But it wasn't like that. We were like, well, yeah, we we love each other and we like each other. But what if this isn't isn't the thing for us? Yeah, what if, yeah, we want we want God's perfect will. So I think there's, I want like for I always say that with my sister. I want the guy to pursue her. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want her to have to go out and find these guys and hopefully just one guy. But like <laughs> not. I don't want her to have to pursue someone. So, but we need the the men so Mm -hmm. godly men to pursue but not to be so forceful and pushy you know because that's that's not of god like we should pursue and we should fight for good things but when you know for when there's boundaries and stuff we need to make sure Mm -hmm. that we let those boundaries be there because for our protection is to protect not only uh, you was to protect the other person too yeah, so and also yeah. i want to share something along with that i was looking through all my stuff to try to find this journal and i also found a letter from you mo that you gave to me around that mm. exact same time for my birthday mm-hmm. january 24th and <laughs> I, I was just i just remember just that letter so precious and a confirmation to me because that was the time we were fasting and it was a confirmation that you were going to be a husband because mm-hmm. of your response to that and you were kind and you were like you said not forceful you were um totally in submission to god's will and at the end you said Mm. i'm excited to marry you if it's god's will Mm -hmm. he said if that's what god wants and that's the key is always if that's what the lord wants if 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 there's any ounce of this is going to happen like Mm -hmm. we need to do this like you will be my wife mm-hmm. or, mm-hmm. you know, then that's taking things into our own hands. But yeah. if we know at any moment, um, God could, you know, God could say something different then we need to li- be willing to listen to that, even mm-hmm. if it's not what we like. Yeah. Yeah. So and it can be flattering when you feel like you're lonely. Cause right. You maybe weren't getting as much affection, like not from your dad and stuff. And he was going through stuff with mm-hmm. like being, um, getting drunk and stuff. So mm-hmm. that it isn't an excuse for that, but that's where we encourage fathers and stuff to be, you know, taking charge and yeah. protecting their daughters, right? Because mm-hmm. your dad had opportunities to tell him, hey, yeah. I don't want you with my daughter, but he felt like he couldn't because yep. of his lifestyle. Exactly. So that's where even if someone is in a lifestyle and you're not doing something you should, but you see danger, you still should warn and stop, even if you, mm-hmm. and uh, and you should also get your life right yeah. <laughs> with God. But um, I want to then get into when you came to church. So you started coming to church. I remember you were coming to church and and everyone just would always be like, oh, Val, she's so sweet. And everyone knew you, right? A sweet valley. That yeah. was your label. like, mm-hmm. And you still are, right? But before mm-hmm. it was more of a worldly sense. Like yeah. mm-hmm. you just wanted just everyone to like more. you. Mm-hmm. You wanted everyone to feel like you had a good relationship, that you yeah. and your ex were, everything was fine. Like that you weren't having sex, like you, that you were pure, you were mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. But deep down, you knew how wicked you were mm-hmm. and you knew that, but... So can you share what it was like coming to Calvary, being around all of us, then getting engaged mm-hmm. um, to your ex mm-hmm. and, but, and share that. And then how, when your dad, you know, when he passed away. So can you yeah. kind of share that a little bit? Yeah. So I, yeah, I remember coming to church and the first thing was, oh, wow, these people are so loving. They're so kind. Like your mom, mm-hmm. like she like just grabbed me. I was like, you feel like you're my mom already. Like, <laughs> and the was, funny thing is, is my family knew Veli's family. Well, my mm. dad knew Veli's dad yeah. um, from Grace Chapel before because your dad is an amazing worship leader. Uh-huh. So they had that 
connection. So it was crazy how God brought that together yeah. mm-hmm. because like our families knew each other when, yeah. like before we were born. Before we so were born. Yeah. Crazy. So cool. Yes. So I just remember that and I was like, wow, everyone's so kind here. And I just felt so accepted and loved. And uh, I remember just looking around at everyone and especially Mariah and like, wow, like she's such a godly woman and like, I can't compare with that. Like my, I'm like, I had, had hidden sin. And so I just wanted to continue to hide that. And I wanted to continue to look good. But at the same time, I desperately needed help and I knew what I was doing was wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there was, I don't know how it got out that I was, you know, in, in sin and Mm -hmm. that me, me and my ex were in, we were sexual being Mm -hmm. sexually immoral. I don't know how it got out, but, um, I don't know if I told it or I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But anyways, I remember your dad, uh, I heard it down the grapevine. I don't know how you say that. <laughs> Through the grapevine, yeah. Grape yeah. I heard um, a new name for me, and it was called Smelly Belly. <laughs> and I said, what? Just kidding. <laughs> uh, I, my, my defense mechanism was, oh, like, that's so mean. Yeah. Like, I, I would mean. always try to make it look like I was a victim or I mm-hmm. was noble. I wouldn't, try, I wouldn't usually get outrightly angry. But mm. I would try to make it look like yeah. noble, you know, yeah. like, oh, I'm, I'm, I like look I'm at me, martyr. I'm a martyr. <laughs> I'm, I I'm don't get angry at people. I'm being persecuted. <laughs> Pastor Craig's calling me smelly belly. Mm. And the reason why was because I was worshiping God with my lips, yeah. but not with my heart. And I was mm. a worship leader at my, my school before that. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to be worship leader at uh, the college I was going to, Grand Canyon. And I'm so glad they did not um, accept me <laughs> onto yeah. the worship team. God knew. But, um, and I'm sure there were people on there too that could, were discerning. But, um, but yeah, so he called me that. And that was like the first exposure I had to hard truth in love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I didn't think it was in love at the time. But now looking back, I'm so grateful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, I, um. Yeah, so that was that was one part of it. And another also another part was the verse in Psalms where it says worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness mm-hmm. or in the beauty of holiness. And um yeah, I loved that that Pastor Craig always brought it back to worship mm-hmm. because that's what our lives Amen. can be or c- cannot be. Um we're always worshiping. Well, they they're always it's always a form of worship in our lives, whether it's worshiping the one true God Mm -hmm. or worshiping ourselves or worshiping a person. And I was worshiping a person. I was worshiping a feeling. I was worshiping, um, the, the fear of man. I was worshiping man. Mm -hmm. And rather than worshiping God, the one who created me, the one who is worthy of all worship. And, um, I can't, I kind of got lost on the, what the question was. Oh, and you then, so then that's when you got engaged to your ex and oh, you yeah. knew you shouldn't, but that was again, fear of man. Yeah. I remember even looking at the pictures, mm-hmm. you're a deer in the headlights. Like everyone was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And our family, we were like, this is wrong. Mm-hmm. Like someone should help Val because mm-hmm. you literally look trapped. Like it mm-hmm. was the saddest thing ever. Mm-hmm. Like everyone was like so happy about it. Like mm-hmm. all your friends that you had in the mm-hmm, past mm-hmm. who would always call you sweet Valley. Mm-hmm. But we knew like, this is not right. Like someone yeah. needs to do something. And then, um, the other story that I love so much is your dad. He, when oh, yes. he came to church, you want to share what he said yes, about Morgan? I would love to. Yes. I wanted to share that. I just didn't know how to finish it. Oh, yeah. So thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. So as we we're going to church and I, I was getting convicted, you know, yeah. from just worship time and from the from your dad speaking and God speaking through your dad. Um, so many rainbow words to my heart um, had never been spoken to so much by God all at once. It's <laughs> like, wow. Um, and then I remember there was a time that I can't remember the timeline of it all. I don't know if it was after we got I got engaged to this other guy or if it was before, but your dad actually called a meeting Mm -hmm. (laughs) for me to come to your house Mm -hmm. with all of you. Like Mm -hmm. who does that? Except for you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I remember like feeling so honored and scared at all, all at the same time. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) I was like, the pastor's calling me to come. Uh, What is it going to be about? But I kind of knew. So my mom was there. My sister was there. And I just remember just, I just remember love and I just was so loved, but it was so hard, but it was so good. And I was like, what is this? This is true. This is, this is so much truth. So painful, but I know it's good. I, this is my, this is what I want. Cause I, I, 
I as always as a kid, I always had a heart for truth. And mm. Um, especially in school, mm-hmm. I always wanted the truth. I always wanted the truth to win out. If we were debating, I love debating because hopefully the truth would win out. Yeah. Like my worldview classes, those were so, I love this. Um, but anyways, so um, he gave me a couple of verses, Pastor Craig did, about not being unequally yoked, about if your right hand causes you to stumble, if your eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out or cut it off. Yep. Um the other verse of worship God in the splendor of holiness. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, Proverbs twenty nine twenty five, which is so important for life and relationships. The fear of man will prove to be a snare, but those who trust in the Lord will be kept safe. Mm-hmm. So all those verses. So anyways. And you remember um, them all. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yes. She writes it down. Yes, <laughs> write it down. Yes. And God's written it on my heart too, because those mm-hmm. are the pivotal mm-hmm. verses in my life. Um, yeah. But anyways, I got sidetracked but i just wanted to give a little basis of kind of where i was at that Mm -hmm. time so this was actually towards the beginning so my dad started coming to church as well with all of us me and my sister and my mom uh, which was really surprising because he had stopped going to church altogether um but he came to church and i remember he saw your dad and he's like precious or what did he say? Prophetic, yeah. precious, uh, prophetic, Pastor Craig. Because <laughs> they used to go to Grace Chapel together, mm-hmm. and um, and he, mm-hmm. anyways, we were in the foyer, in, in the, the foyer, foyer. <laughs> in the foyer, and uh, my dad said to me, "Hey, Val, you should marry Morgan." <laughs> <laughs> Just outright. And you were still with the other guy. At I the was time? still with the other guy. He was actually in the foy- foyer. <laughs> um, and I said, Dad. You can't say that. He's right here. Like, yeah. like this other yeah. guy's right here. And my dad's like, I'm sorry. It's mm-hmm. just the truth. You should marry him. You guys are perfect for each other. And he just saw your heart for worship, Morgan, and just. And I didn't even talk to him yet. <laughs> no. I think the first time was after that. Yeah, like he was in the prophetic, yeah. precious, fast, uh, precious, <laughs> precious dad. <laughs> He's taken after a fast kick. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, I just remember that. And it's just so precious because yeah. my dad. As, as you mentioned, Ryan, my dad passed away that, um, let's see, 2017, I came to church. January 2018. 2018. January 20, wait, sorry, I get the time. So it was 2018, I January think. 2018. It's mm-hmm. Canon's right, I got yeah. married in 2018. Yeah. He passed away the January 3rd of 2018. And I just remember um, just thinking about those words that he said um, and just how he he gave you his blessing mm-hmm. <laughs> before he even knew that yeah. we were going to be together. Yep. Um, so sorry if I straight no, off on the that's question. Good. But and and then <laughs> so your dad passed away and that was a difficult time. And then I remember you went back to GCU and and then that was when you were still living in sin. Mm-hmm. But Mm -hmm. I remember that's when my dad, he called you and he's like, (laughs) Vel, you need to come down here. Like we're going to go or we're going to go up there and we're going (laughs) to we're going to bring you back down. Like we need to take you from that because Mm -hmm. there was like this thing where it's like you couldn't because then you would have to pay more money Mm -hmm. and all this scholarship. And that's the point is if Mm -hmm. you're trapped and you need to do something to get out of sin Mm -hmm. and that you mm. should be willing to, yeah. you know, lose there's like no a lot of stuff or, you know, waste money if that's going to save your soul. Yeah, because there's no price you can put it on. No, and so, cut it off. so then can you tell us when my dad called and, and, and we also told you somehow you found out that, hey, Morgan, you know, he, he's not like at it, this it, time, it was, at this time, like you didn't say we're kind of, we're, we're kind of moving fast, but we were at this time maker. I was like, I was like, oh, I, she's pretty. And I, I like that she sings and different things. But at you this point I was, was like, oh, I'm, I was trying not to think of her because mm-hmm. I was like, she's in a relationship. And then I was like, now she's engaged. And I'm like, I'm really not going to try mm-hmm. to think of her mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. And so like, like when they said they're engaged, I was like, oh, congratulations. So mm-hmm. I thought it was, I like it wasn't like a big thing at that time. I was like, "Oh man, that's sad." I was, I was more sad for you at that time. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, "This isn't right for you." I like, even if I don't marry eyes. you, I was like, yeah. "This isn't right for you." Mm-hmm. And uh, so yeah, and then, and then after all that, after like mm-hmm. she came back from GCU, after going into, into that, even though we said like, "Oh, that's not going to be good for you" mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, but after that, that's when like people started to know that I mm-hmm. liked her. Like I, I didn't really tell people. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah. But, and then it was, uh, 
it was a hard time in the in the sense that I didn't want to I didn't want to just be the rebound or anything like that. And I didn't want to try to distract her from the Lord because Mm -hmm. I knew she was just coming out of a tough relationship. And even though I liked her, um, I I didn't want her to focus on me or to put her attention to me. Mm -hmm. So I wanted her to focus on God. But then there's other people who liked her too. So I was like, Mm -hmm. I still have to be, (laughs) I, I have to, I want to wait. A good amount of time, but I still <laughs> want to. to yeah, I still have to <laughs> pursue. So yeah, so Can't there's a, a weasel, there's, a, there's a balancing act. No, no, and, and then I love it because just me being the outsider. <laughs> um, I just you know I remember <laughs> that time when you finally were like you had broken up, right? You mm-hmm. and your ex had broken up mm-hmm. finally, and yeah. you were done with that, mm-hmm. and. You know, he got angry and mm-hmm. all that stuff. You broke broke off the engagement, and mm-hmm. then you like hadn't hadn't seen him after that. Mm-hmm. But praise God for that because oh, your yes. mom also was was able to step up and like mm-hmm. help you through that. Yeah, and but everyone else was like, Val, like the the people who were on the side of sweet Val and trying to appease your flesh. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. bad, but you needed mean people like my dad. <laughs> right, the <laughs> world would say, oh a pastor's calling someone smelly that is so <laughs> rude but that was the very thing that woke you up yep. that if you knew that if you continued in that mm-hmm. relationship it would be unequally yoked yep. you would not have mm-hmm. it where your husband is leading your children mm-hmm. one day and it would be completely leading mm-hmm. you astray to where yeah. you who knows if you would even be saved oh. and so praise yep. god right you the breakup mm-hmm. happened and then i love it because i remember seeing morgan pray for you kind of be on the outside letting it be like he was saying where you could be intimate with God. Cause we knew you needed that time mm-hmm. to not just cause it wasn't like, Oh, heal from the breakup. You're sad. You're like, it was freedom. Like it yeah. was bondage and freedom! you were, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so freeing. But then, right. Even though a bad thing is taken out, mm. you have to then replace it with yes. a good thing, which is the Lord. Yes. You, right. So many times people will take it out of break, <laughs> yeah. breakups, but then they go right back to yeah. another toxic thing. Exactly. And so can you tell us what mm. that looked like into, <clears throat> um, the time when you and Morgan, you know, yes. start recording. Yes. Mm-hmm. Before that, I want to share yes. a little something from Luke. Um, I just read Please open your Bibles. Yes. Please, please open, open your, your Bibles, Bibles <laughs> to Luke. Quick chapter, Bible study. Quick Bible study. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Luke chapter 15. Mm. So mm. good. I won't read all of it, but I'll just read some, um, the parts that really uh, stuck out to me, really spoke to me. Um, so Luke 15 says, Parable of the Lost Sheep. Mm. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors saying to them, rejoice with me for I have found my sheep that was lost. Mm. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who, who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. The key right there, repentance. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Verse eight, the parable of the lost coin. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls together friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me, for I found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. There we got that Mm -hmm. word again. And he said, the parable of the prodigal son. And he said, there was a man who had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered up all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his field to feed the pigs and he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate and no one gave him anything 
But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with young hunger. I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he rose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him and the son said to him father i have sinned against heaven and before you i am no longer worthy to be called your son but the father said to his servants bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this my son for this my son was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found Mm. and they begin to celebrate Mm. amen so amen that is like so good. <laughs> That's my life story right there. Like the day that I gave my life back to God, mm-hmm. April 29th, 2018. Mm-hmm. I always get the year wrong. <laughs> yeah, I know April 29th, mm-hmm. but it was my last day of school. And uh, I just remember I opened up my Bible to this and it just hit me. And I was like, God, I'm done. I give my heart to you. I, I just mm-hmm. said it aloud. God, I repent. I give my life to you and I'm done. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm done. I'm I'm not worthy to be called your Mm -hmm. daughter. Like Mm -hmm. I'm here for you, whatever you want. And, um, I remember, um, the first thing that God told me, um, after that was honor your father and your mother. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, my ex was coming over that night to drop off my, some of my dorm stuff because he he was helping me move back from Phoenix. And I said, mom, what I do, he's coming over. And she said, go in your room and do your homework. I said, okay. So I went in my room and I did my homework. He came over and he talked with my mom. And my mom had some things to say to him, like, <laughs> you shouldn't have done this. You shouldn't have done this. And uh, he got up and he was angry and he barged into my room. And he took the ring back in anger. And I was crying, but it was good. And it was like, it was like freeing, but it was painful, of course. Anyways, he he left. And I just remember after that, it was just like, just newness and just mm. peace. Hashtag new creation. Hashtag new creation. Me and <laughs> can we that. put it up on the screen? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know if you can do yes, that. Kevin can. <laughs> but hashtag new creation. Yes. Mm-hmm. And around that same time, or before that, I got this necklace that has an R on it for my name, mm-hmm. Ravel. But little did I know <laughs> that R would mean something else. And yes. that would mean redeemed. And like, if mm-hmm. you guys have seen The Chosen, when she says, I am redeemed. <laughs> I yeah. love that part. So good. I just... Love redemption. Amen. And um that's that's our story yeah. um as Christians. And um mm-hmm. and so anyways, um can you say yes. the question again? I oh, just really want to say, that. say something too is uh, there's a lot of people like when you read the prodigal with the the story of the prodigal son think later than the brother, right? He was oh. angry mm-hmm. because everyone was happy and everything. Mm-hmm. So when you then were with Morgan, a lot of girls were mad because mm-hmm. Morgan had, let me tell you, he a had flock. A, a flock <laughs> of girls coming after him because he, right, Morgan, so. <laughs> and Morgan, he's a godly man. He, right. I mean, there was things in your past that you had struggled with, mm-hmm. with like pornography and stuff, yep. but you, for the most part, you, you did humble yourself and you had never like kissed a girl or then I never really had even like a girlfriend or anything like that. And you were a worship leader and, and, uh, pastor becoming and stuff so so all the girls wanted to be with morgan and rightly so my mm-hmm. mom's always like that's not shocking like yeah. you love god and you're good looking <laughs> yep. and but then they see morgan with you and there is literally some girls that were like do you know Veli? do you know her past do you know mm. but that is the very reason why morgan wouldn't want to be with those girls who were religious right maybe they had never mm. even been with anyone but inside they were rotting and bitter where Veli you would have been that girl. If you had never yeah. been broken and gone through that, yeah. then you would have been that religious girl. You wouldn't have been mm-hmm. broken. And God yeah. truly, Romans eight twenty eight works all things together. Yeah. He used that yeah. sin in your life to break you to where mm-hmm. he truly humbled you. And mm-hmm. now we see a redeemed, humble valley, not mm-hmm. a self-righteous, nice, sweet valley. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love most about your story is yeah. that, as much as people are like, oh, Morgan, you could have, you married a girl that wasn't really saved and she's newly, no, that's the whole point is when you, you surrender to God, mm-hmm. like you're a new creation. Mm-hmm. And, and especially it is different for, I think, boys and girls where mm-hmm. I think if you're, 
a girl, you should be careful if a guy is newly saved because if they can't lead you, I think also a difference is, is when Morgan can lead Vel Mm -hmm. and you already, you know, it's not like you didn't know anything about Christ and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. It was just like your coming home experience. But at the same time, I would say for them to be careful if you're a girl Mm -hmm. and a guy is like freshly newly saved, Mm -hmm. doesn't know anything because you really can't lead you spiritually and he might be a good godly guy now but might not be right for you so then (laughs) can you share with us i know we're running out of time but (laughs) can you share with us um was that transition um like from yeah getting out of the relationship to just like not even thinking about marriage yes and then Uh, getting into the yes that's so good so yeah that whole period after i just repented it was like god was like i have free reign in your life now like Mm -hmm. that's what i've been wanting and so Um, he was just renewing my mind, like be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He was renewing my body, my memories, all these things. And that came with also with deliverance and, Mm -hmm. um, meeting with pastor Craig and mama Teresa and, um, just let them listening to me and pouring into me God's truth. And pastor Craig reminded me of something. Um, he actually mentioned you Morgan and he's like, he was talking about marriage, like down the road. He's like, I don't want you to think about marriage right now or yeah. at all. I don't want you to even think it's a possibility because I just want you to focus on Christ. But mm-hmm. if God did call you to marriage and say that was Morgan, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, just remember that God is the whole cake. Like he is mm-hmm. everything yeah. Yeah. like a husband or a friend or something is just like, it was, it, does he say the frosting or the cherry on the top? Cherry <laughs> on okay. Top. It would just be like the cherry on top. It's just an extra God's added blessing. The cake and frosting. He's God is the cake it. and frosting. Yeah. No, he is the everything. Holy Spirit, hey, this is good. God is the cake. Oh, yes, this is the good. Holy Spirit is the frosting and Jesus is the, the very filling fill, inside. Very filling. So all <laughs> the, <laughs> the red, the blue, is all of the yummy stuff. Yeah. yeah. So good. I love that analogy for you young girls watching and yeah. and anybody watching just remember that god is all of it he's the kid mm-hmm. he takes he's everything and anything a- added on to that is just an extra blessing that's not necessary mm-hmm. um and so i just like i was saying with that renewing of the mind god had just been i still had that desire for marriage but it had changed where i was like mm-hmm. okay god i just want your will like you are my first love like yeah. you're my husband you are my leader And I remember, like I said, I still had that desire. And I remember praying to God. I said, Lord, if it's your will, could I marry Morgan? But once I prayed that, I kind of just released it to God. I said, it's Mm -hmm. not in my hands. This is up to you. Um, And I just want your will. And also another verse um, in Psalms, it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And that verse can be very it can be misused and abused, but that word delight in, um, Hebrew, it means, um, to like make yourself like pliable, make yourself soft, like, uh, Mm -hmm. like a sponge almost, um, like clay. Um, so when we delight ourselves in the Lord, he changes our hearts to align with his desires. Mm -hmm. And, um, so that was, that's what he was doing. Uh, and he was changing my desire to be Mm -hmm. loved, cherished, valued, wanted, uh, really just, just uh, transferred over to just mm. wanting God's love. And um, new creation has new desires. Yes. So, yeah. Amen. So yeah, that transition period of the renewing, so important, so vital. And then um, when Soraya and Kenan got married, my sister, mm-hmm. Soraya, and then mm-hmm. your guys' brother, Kenan, yep. and now my brother uh, in law. But um, anyway, so it was their wedding in June of mm. 2018. And I remember. Um, we were getting them all ready and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. And I was just, I was just so excited for them. And I was just like, God, you're so good. Like they had, she had a pretty miraculous story too, getting out of a bad past, bad Mm -hmm. relationship as well. And it's just such a redemption. It was just such a redemption Mm -hmm. moment. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, anyways, so that night, um, Pastor Craig was, dance uh, dancing around <laughs> was walking around and you just like jump i you don't were know dancing. i was dancing your little yeah yeah he was saying there's something there that wasn't there before yeah. <laughs> and i was like what mm. I, kinda, I was like what's going on and then i remember with morgan um how, how did that happen we were there was a bathroom there and i was like hey mo let's reenact the story of when you first met me and so i came out of the bathroom mm. and i pretended to be singing because we were at a mm. wedding again and, I just and that was wild <laughs> for me because, like, for this whole time, we hadn't even talked that that much. Mm-hmm. Like, 
we were at church and stuff and hung out with <laughs> different people, but like we didn't talk that much. So mm-hmm. when you said that, I was like, "What?" Like mm-hmm. she she remembers that. Or, and then I we have a picture. Um, when Vel and I signed the marriage document uh, or <laughs> marriage license cer- certificate, yeah, yeah certificate. The license um, for my brother and her sister. <laughs> And we have a picture. I'm <laughs> signing it, and Bella's just like staring, staring right at me. Like, <laughs> it was funny. I got my eye on yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. so you're that's the that's boy so of my dreams when I was a little girl. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember. Yeah, exactly. I remember also telling you that night. I before before everything happened, which I'm gonna. Which we'll, we will unveil in just a moment. But I remember saying to you, I was like, Morgan, there's something I want to tell you that my dad said about you. <laughs> I said, I can't <laughs> tell you yet, but I want to tell you someday. And it was basically that my dad said you were going to be, that I should marry yeah. you. And mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, I want to, I'm going to mm-hmm. tell you something. And you're like, what is it? What is it? I was like, I can't tell you yet. Mm-hmm. Soon though. There's a lot <laughs> happening that I guess... I guess we did talk. Now that I think about it, oh, a yeah. couple of days before we were at Canon Surprise. That's when I showed you apartment. my journal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so so we we always had a chaperone. Well, I mean, like so There's this was we Canon and Soraya. So we were chaperones for Canon yeah. and Soraya so that they wouldn't be alone because they were getting married, mm-hmm. you know. And so we were at their apartment, and mm-hmm. they were talking, and they they talk for you know, late into the night, that and we had nice. always someone with them. But we ended up talking on the couch. They were sitting on the floor right in front of us, and we were on the mm-hmm. couch. And we ended up talking, out-talking, lo- out-talking <laughs> them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they talked for a long yeah, time. Yeah. They're like, okay, you two lovebirds. <laughs> I can't. Kenna was joking with me. And, uh, yeah, she showed me her journal and everything. So I was like. Basically saying, yeah. who, like, what type of man? And she's like, you, you. Yeah. And you. My, my parents <laughs> like, is everything all right? Are you guys all right? And. So I came home at like four in the morning and then I told my parents that I really like Vel and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and then I remember that yeah. that day we were, uh, yeah, I, that's too, too many details. We need the yeah. spark we got notes version. <laughs> yeah, yeah, spark yeah notes. but <laughs> at the wedding, yeah, I I was like, man, I want to I wanna ask ask uh, Mama Colette, mm-hmm. that's her mom. Yeah. Um, I want to ask if I can court Vel. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't know when and I wasn't really planning on it. We were just focusing on Ken and Stra's wedding. Mm-hmm. But then toward the end of the night of the wedding, I told my dad, I was like, I think I, I think I might ask uh, Mama Colette if I can court <laughs> Bell. And he's the only one I told. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so he's the only one who knew. And then I finally, well, you could say whatever you, you're saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then, then your mom was talking about a story about her, her oh, son, yeah. like having God people were saying that she was going to have sons two, sons, two sons. And she was saying that to Candon and me. And uh, I was like, I think I told Cannon later, I was like, I think she's talking about me, too. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want to be presumptuous. <laughs> and Cannon's like, no, she's not. And then it turns out later, she's like, yeah, I was like, I was talking about you. And so the two yeah. brothers yeah. being and her sons, which they now are. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And I remember my mom, when I would come home from church before the wedding, before Cannon's rise wedding, she would say, Morgan likes you. I said, Mom, you can't, you can't <laughs> talk about that. Yeah. She's so like, there's a lot going yeah, on. So much. Yeah, so and then you can, all, you can talk to me. Yeah, talk you can get, yeah, you can get more of the details from Bill. <laughs> but at the end of the wedding, um, so I didn't, I didn't want to like, you know, steal the show or anything <laughs> with like asking. You waited till yeah. they left. <laughs> so, I, so I, I was like, I didn't have this like all planned out extravagantly or anything like that. I'm just kind of like go with the flow more. And, mm-hmm. but so I I went to Mama Colette and I asked her, and then uh, and she's like, yes, and she's like, of course, and I've been waiting for you to ask yeah. and everything like that, and uh, and then <laughs> later, so it was after they had left, and it was it was pat, it was it was actually the next day because it was like one something in the morning. I think yeah. your mom says. It was like one twenty two or something yeah. because she Genesis remembered yeah. Genesis one twenty two, yeah. About um be fruitful and multiply I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, something like that. Yeah. But <laughs> so then yeah, I was like, I don't know how to ask her and there's a bunch of mm-hmm. people and we're cleaning up and different yeah. things. And I think I was with Trinity and mm-hmm. Vel was talking to someone and I just was like, Hey Vel, mm-hmm. you know that I like you? And I had never <laughs> said anything like that mm-hmm. to her before or and we had we ever. hadn't even really no, talked right. that much and so it was just a simple thing like that and then mm-hmm. she, what did you say? And then I said, <laughs> Hey Mo, do you know that I like you too? And it was <laughs> and then, I just didn't know it was just so wild, like 
and because Candon and Soraya were always kind of playing it like hard for me. They're yeah. like, Soraya's like, yeah, I don't know, Morgan. You're gonna have to just find out. And she she knew she had been talking to Vel. Yeah. She knew that she liked, but they wouldn't even tell me anything. So I was like, I really don't even know if Vel likes me or if she's ready for anything like that. So. But you were, and you said you and liked me back, and it was so yeah. unreal to me. And, and then I everything changed. Yeah. yeah, and I remember that night so well. Trinity was there with us when you told me. Mm. Trinity was so excited, and we were all hugging, and we were mm. just so excited. And you sat, you sat me down on the, there was like a little bench, t- bench yeah. or something. And you said, um, yeah, I, I, something like, I like you, and but I just want you to know that if mm-hmm. you're ever to put me before God, yeah. like I don't, this won't work. Yep. Like mm-hmm. you need to put God first. And, Amen. and that was just the key. It was like such a transformation from my past relationship where mm-hmm. it was all about each other. We were idolizing each other. There was no God in the relationship. We tried to make God in come into the relationship, but it just didn't work because we weren't living lives that were honoring to him. Mm-hmm. But that, that was just, that changed everything for me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, God, you're so good. That's what I always desired as a child. And then mm-hmm. another thing you said too, you said, and I don't want to kiss until mm-hmm. we get married. Amen. And yeah. I was like, praise the Lord. And I was yeah. like, this is such a redemption story. Whoa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bless this mic. It was such a rede- redemption story, such a flip, such a transformation. And that's what. That's what God does. It's totally opposite. Like before I I was ridden with anxiety. I was ridden with depression and suicidal thoughts and mm-hmm. just shame and condemnation. And then the moment I, I listened to the words of God spoken through Pastor Craig and spoken through Mariah and so many other people, um, like the moment I just submitted to it, it was like, God's like, I have permission now to mm-hmm. free you from these things. Mm-hmm. And like, it was just so... Like I put my faith and trust in God. And so many times in the Bible, it says your faith has made you well. Go and sin no more. And that's that's the key is putting our faith. And that, that entails complete trust, mm-hmm. complete obedience, um, mm-hmm. a walking faith, like a, a living, active faith. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was totally different. Um, yeah. So I was so grateful for that. Oh. And then that was that was the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> courtship. And sometimes people are like, oh, why do you say court? Like that. That sounds so weird and so foreign <laughs> to us. We just, and sometimes we, I just say date, but yeah. court, the reason why we say that is because it's, it's kind of more like dating with a purpose. Mm-hmm. Like Mariah said yeah. before, like I, I didn't want to date before um, because mm-hmm. I wanted to date as if, Hey, I'm going to get married. Like mm-hmm. I didn't want to just mess around and mm-hmm. just break people's hearts Have and fun. then break my heart. Yeah. I mm-hmm. didn't want to do, do that stuff. So it's still a risk because like, you know, we yeah. still prayed about it. We're yeah. like, should we get married? Yeah. But it's with the intention of getting married mm-hmm. more mm-hmm. and it's, okay. and, and then setting those boundaries mm-hmm. and different things. And that's why you have to do that from the beginning. Yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't like fail and then have to do it after the fact. Sometimes people do, but mm-hmm. I think what we should do is set those boundaries. Mm-hmm. And because it's it's only going to be for a short time. Like, I encourage, you know, to to spend that time to get to know that person mm-hmm. and to see if you guys really can uh, handle mm-hmm. each other. Yeah. Because you can hide things for a long time. So we we ended up courting for almost a year. Mm-hmm. I think, yep, just like about. June to June, mm-hmm. just yep. just about, yeah. Well, and then we engaged. got engaged yeah. in uh, November November yep. 2nd, I believe, right? Yeah. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So we got engaged. Uh, so this was in June mm-hmm. that we, yeah. we started courting. June 21st or June 22nd. June 20th. Yeah, yeah, it was the next was day, the next early day. in the morning. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, November 2nd, that's when we got engaged. Yeah. And then we got married. This is really skipping ahead, but yeah. we got married June uh, 7th, 2019. Yeah. So, yeah. And I just want to say something quickly on that of how important it is for the man to set those boundaries mm-hmm. um, yeah. and to obviously be on the same page, but yeah. to have the spiritual leader of that relationship say, hey, this is how it's going to go. Because if the if the, the woman tries to set those boundaries and the man isn't on the same page, it's in and, and both ways too, but especially with the man not being on the same page mm-hmm. it is not gonna go well and yeah. um and um and that's why it works so well is because not that we're perfect or anything it's because we know that we're so weak 
Like mm-hmm. I, I know I don't yeah. I have no idea how people do it without chaperones, no, without um any accountability. Or I don't boundaries. know how people they say don't. they can they do fall sleep and over. They, I've never yeah. met anybody. And like that I'm like done that with I always say that. that. I'm like, man, I couldn't imagine like like being alone with you. I was like because if I like you, I'm like mm-hmm. my yeah, it could be flesh just but you know, there is there is still a desire mm-hmm. for them, right? I mean yeah. It is sex is good in marriage, yeah, but before that, it isn't. So that's why you need yeah. to set those boundaries. Yeah, I was about to say, messages or comment if you have seen or you have not had boundaries and not failed in other ways because people think, oh, just if you have sex, but if you're mm-hmm. doing other things, like if it's you are arousing, arousing love before it's time, yeah. Second Timothy 2 22, exactly. don't um, flee from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Yep. And it mm-hmm. says also, um, we have a lot of verses that Morgan, he found, and we'll, we'll start listing them, but it's so important. Like the Bible even talks about, um, to treat, you know, the yeah. other person as like a brother or sister, like, yep. and so you wouldn't be like making out with your brother and sister, mm-hmm. like our brother or sister. So you shouldn't be doing that. And that's where mm-hmm. I think that everyone's like, well, I can kiss, but it leads to other things. And so I think that it wasn't just laying down, oh, we're not going to kiss. Mm-hmm. You guys didn't touch each other. Like you were very careful with that. Like you're, cause and even then when pe- we hugged too long. Yeah, and you had to, so when you do, you try from. to do boundaries that are more strict because you know, you'll, you'll fudge and you yeah. know that mm-hmm. you'll sneak things. And that's why in the beginning, I just encourage people before they start a relationship to like sit down yeah. maybe get a, a pen and paper mm. or something and write down boundaries and mm-hmm. have those people around you yeah. whether they be like your As young witnesses. adults group <laughs> or yeah disciple people people are discipling you elders mm-hmm. of the church to be able to say like hey like mm-hmm. make sure that we don't do these things and yeah. and be real with us if we are and don't make us feel uncomfortable if we're doing something like mm-hmm. Like say and the hard thing. And don't to believe us. the lie of the world that you have to live together or you have to sleep together yeah. to know if you're compatible. No. Oh, yeah. Like totally there's true. there's so many stats and I wish I had them. I didn't pull them up, <laughs> but it's it ruins cohabitation marriages. or whatever they call it. You know, living together before marriage. The stats are horrible. Like yep. it it just leads to so much worse worse things. And then you also think about like if you're you can be unfaithful. Because you're not married, so you're basically, you, well, you would know you're fornicating if you're doing that. Yeah. But you're also almost committing adultery yeah. on that person. Mm-hmm. Even if you're going to marry that person, yeah. you're not married. They're not so, your spouse yet. Yeah, they're not your spouse yet. So you don't want that because that shows, hey, if you could be unfaithful, then it's like in yeah. marriage, then so you can kind of question each other. And I'm not saying you should if you've messed up and failed. But that's that a lot of bad things can happen from that. Mm -hmm. And yes, God can renew and stuff, but we don't sin just so that God's grace can abound. That's Mm -hmm. not what we already sin enough for that. So there's a verse, uh, first Thessalonians four, three through five for this is the will of God, Mm -hmm. your sanctification sanctification that you abstain from sexual immorality Mm -hmm. that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor not in the passion of lust like the gentiles who do not know god so Mm. yeah we need to be holy as he is holy and remember Mm. like we're not we're not holy we've failed we've done bad things um and that's why we need to set boundaries because we know how weak we are and that's yeah. why we need to submit to god so exactly yeah. i also remember my friend she would say um she said to me when she knew that we weren't meeting alone together she said mm-hmm. how do you get to know him <laughs> like how do you guys get to it know each other well. <laughs> yeah and i was just thinking about that and i was like i have never gotten to know someone so quickly yeah. and so deeply than i did with you mm-hmm. because there was no distraction yeah because sex and opening up that door, it's a distraction. It brings it, so much guilt and shame. Yeah, too. and it numbs your mm-hmm. brain. It, yeah. y- you can't think properly. Yeah. Um, and so when we didn't have that, it was like mm. so focused, so clear. Yeah. I could we just actually have to talk. And we get actually to have to talk. It. So <laughs> one tip I would have yeah. for people where they're like, we can't meet alone. Like what? Like <laughs> what? What? <laughs> like just to, and a, a, um, a tip is to call each other. Yeah. Like. Or FaceTime. Phone calls. We spent hours on the phone. Mm. And yeah. even then you need to be careful with mm-hmm. how you talk because yeah. there were times when we talked probably about stuff we shouldn't, maybe mm-hmm. too 
too far about my past, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. I probably should have waited till maybe we got married or mm-hmm. deliverance session when we were, had yeah. a witness. So, you know, we we learn from that um, as and as a caution to you: be careful what comes out of your mouth because yeah. your mm-hmm. tongue has power of life and death. It can cause your mm-hmm. significant other to stumble, mm-hmm. you know, or think about things they shouldn't. Yeah, there's a balance because there's a balance. You don't want to hide things, of course. Exactly. Yeah. Um, especially you want to tell things before marriage, but you also don't need to give like too much detail to where mm-hmm. maybe it arouses things in the other person yeah, or something yeah. like that. So yeah, the intent of your heart. Yeah. Yep. And then another verse that I love is um, Job 31 1. It says, I have made a covenant with my eyes. How then could I gaze at a virgin? And so another Mm -hmm. thing is if the person that you know you're with is maybe addicted to pornography or Mm -hmm. masturbation, don't think marriage is going to fix it because it's not. Mm -hmm. And that's where you need to make sure that you guys, before you get married, like before you're engaged, that you're being discipled by someone. Like the man mm-hmm. is discipled by a man and the girl's discipled by mm-hmm. a woman because they need to um, have someone holding them accountable. Mm-hmm. And, and when also they go going to church. Yeah, because yeah. if you, because some people don't always have like, um, chaperones like we Morgan and Val always had Trinity or I or something. <laughs> Thank you, Trin. or, yeah, <laughs> Thank or you, part man. with the Thank family. You, you did a lot of group stuff or family mm-hmm. stuff, mm-hmm. which is great because then you have your whole lives yeah. together to be alone. So might as well use that time to mm-hmm. be with everyone so because yeah. you're not able to when you're married as much. And so I, I think it again, it's so much more special when you don't like. And if it didn't work out, what if you and Morgan, you know, you you had the time where mm-hmm. you were fasting. God's like, Hey, you guys yep. are both mm-hmm. great people, but you're, you're not the yeah. one for yeah. that person or Vel's supposed to be single her whole life. Mm-hmm. And there's no to, shame. Like, Oh man, oh, I, you I, experienced I that made out. Yeah, yeah. Or I, yeah. Had sex or something. There's no mm-hmm. shame. Like if God's like, well, yeah, this isn't you for can you still guys. Be friends. Yeah. 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 It be it's weird. not all weird. Yeah. 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 Like a lot of friendships are ruined because they open the door to mm-hmm. sin exactly. of maybe talking too sensual, touching mm-hmm. each other, kissing mm-hmm. each other, then having sex like it just grows and so Mm -hmm. yeah sometimes people think we're a little too extreme Mm -hmm. but trust me i've seen people who do that more and have a way blessed marriage where they're not constantly feeling like that Mm -hmm. guilt and shame and having Mm -hmm. to go through deliverance Mm -hmm. and that also your wedding night then is so much more special Mm -hmm. because you you it truly can i love this and i didn't really know this but when the saying is you may now kiss the bride was literally back then saying for the first time Mm. you may now kiss your bride like you may now before you weren't allowed to but you may now and people don't realize that when people have the kiss and they're they they don't kiss each other that day right and they kiss each other then but they've been making out and doing all this Mm -hmm. other stuff and like touching each other before then no that's not how it was meant to be like and and i i just Love the thought, like, uh, I might insert the video in here, or maybe put in the description below on one of my YouTube videos I put, but your guys' first kiss on your wedding day, it was such a testimony and, like, testament to show that it is... My pants were like, a little tight, though. It is possible. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. Funny. But no, it was, it was You're fine. But it, we we realized that it's not the not kissing, it's, it's mm-hmm. not putting these other idols yeah. and things before God. It only makes and things harder. Image. Like it only mm-hmm. it was it's, kissing lead to, you know, yeah. especially if you're on chaperones, right? Mm-hmm. So especially if you've fallen. Behind. Yeah. And I mean, like we said, even hugging too long, yeah. you know, yeah. but then you get married and you don't have to worry about any of that. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so much just, it's just a temporary thing. So, yes. you know, learn how to, kind of i guess starve the flesh you mm-hmm. know yeah and it's kind of kind of like fasting but mm-hmm. still we hung out so much and there's just so much of that love anyway yeah. so it shows yeah. true love because you're saying i mean love is patient yeah and so when you are waiting patiently for that person and waiting on waiting on the lord that mm-hmm. shows that you truly love that person because if you're truly loving god by obeying his commandments you're going to truly love your neighbor yeah and um and something else i wanted to share this is one of my a great book one of my favorite books when god writes your love story by leslie ludy um one of the quotes in that book i would really highly suggest is also her podcast um set apart girl i'll put in the description below yes those those really were helpful for me get her on the podcast yes (laughs) i know i want to reach out to her um but yeah anyway so a quote from leslie ludy is basically um this is not word for word but say there's a cliff 
uh, talking about purity. Yeah. There's a cliff. Mm -hmm. And are you going to try to go to the very edge of that cliff and say, oh, I haven't fallen. I haven't had sex yet. I haven't fallen off that cliff. I've done everything else, but I haven't had sex. Or are you going to run, yeah. run from youthfulness? Are you going to run from that cliff and get as close as you can to Jesus? If you think of a little sheep wandering off the edge of the hill, oh, I'm not going to fall off. And just being so foolish when we should be running as close to the shepherd as we possibly yep. can. That is what love is. Trying to get as close as you can to mm. the source rather than as far as far away as you can. Mm. So, yeah, I just want to yeah, share you that. Yeah, you don't. You're not supposed to ask, how close can I get no, to exactly. sin without doing it? Because that's just putting you into temptation. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to my friend, like we, sometimes we talk about, um, we pray, Lord, leave me far from temptation mm -hmm. or get me out of this. But we put ourselves in such oh, temptation. Yeah. It's yeah. like, like God, you know, why do we do that? Like we're. We're saying, get me out of this, but we put ourselves so close to yeah. it, and we're n that's not it's the foolish. way we're supposed to do that. Yeah, that's foolish. And I always love that analogy of the triangle, right? So mm. God's at the top, and then husband and wife are at the other angles or mm -hmm. corners. Yeah. And we're not supposed to be just focused, like me and Vel, just focused on each other, mm -hmm. but we're supposed to be focused on God. Mm -hmm. And as we draw closer to God, the whole triangle gets smaller, right? Yes. We, uh, everyone gets closer. And that's why I really saw it. And that's why I've, I'm so blessed with Vel is because she, she, we we're on the same page. She wanted God first. Mm. And yeah, we can still, you know, put each other first by accident or mm -hmm. without realizing it. And mm -hmm. we need to reevaluate and we need yeah. to put God first. Yeah. But that's the thing is like, it's not, it's not about me. It's mm. not, it's not Vel about her. Mm. It's about God first. And mm. then if God is first, then we are looking to bless the other yes. person. And that's what is going to bless a marriage. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I feel, I kind of feel bad for Ryan and Kevin basically planned our wedding. Yeah, <laughs> like we we're, we're so focused on the marriage, which is good. Because, um, but I do, I do wish I helped out a little more. Like we're, we're still there and help, oh. but I'm just so thankful for Kevin and Mariah. Yeah. Uh, they did so much. You're like we got to plan the, all this. All the yeah? ladies that helped. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, all the volunteers the of the whole church and everything. So, gift. but it, it is still kind of a good picture. I know that we still should have stepped up a little more in that area, but some people focus just on, on the wedding the material, yeah. just on, they put so much into the wedding and I've okay. seen, I've seen and heard about so many people who just focus on the wedding mm. and it's this extravagant wedding, mm. but they don't focus on the marriage. Yeah. They don't prepare for the marriage or forever with yeah, yeah. forever. Yeah. It's yeah. forever. That's why we did marriage do, counseling and everything. It's, there's no there's going no back yeah. there's no divorce. And that's out. where, unless they like commit adultery yeah, yeah. or that, but mm -hmm. still then God can work it out. Yep. But I think that so many times that's why you guys did marriage counseling with Kevin and Rachel, yeah. which yes. was amazing. Oh, so Thanks, Kevin, you guys, Thank if you. you are in a relationship or that to get premarital counseling mm -hmm. to, and it's not just premarital counseling to make sure your marriage goes well, they're trying to see whether you should even be with each other. Yeah. Like yeah. The, it might even be where you have Time the ring, you're planning the wedding, you have all everything set mm -hmm. up the dress and everything or and my dad always says until wait, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. until the day that well yeah i don't think you should be planning the wedding until marriage counseling is over <laughs> just wisdom mm -hmm. but I, but before <laughs> you say i do you and you sign the paper and all that you can you don't have to do, go about mm -hmm. it like my dad has always told me like if you are engaged and you like have everything planned and it's the day of your wedding and you just feel from God. It might even be, I just feel from God, not today. Like what if God's yeah. like, maybe tomorrow I yeah. reevaluate, but it messes everyone's schedule up. Everyone's there. All the flowers are bought, the cake, the food, everything's going to go bad. You waste so much money. That is so much more worth it than having to get married and deal with all that pain. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I just encourage you guys, if there's anything in you and how you know is if you don't have, if you don't, have peace from the Lord and you know mm -hmm. that that person can't lead mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and you know that person's going to pull you away from God. Mm -hmm. That's when you need to, you need to get away run, from that. Drop run. Your coat and yeah. run. And, but divorce, sometimes people we get, shouldn't have divorce as be even thinking about no. that. God hates divorce. Yeah. yeah. But sadly in our culture and our society and 
even in the church nowadays, the American you church, like it's, like, it's the same. 50% yeah. of marriages fail, and mm-hmm. maybe it's even higher now. Um, but that shouldn't be, and that's why they're... We should have marriage counseling. That's why we mm-hmm. should be asking God and seeking and counselors him. around yeah. us. And I love mm-hmm. the verse yeah. that says uh, Proverbs fifteen twenty two. It says, "Without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed." And Proverbs eleven fourteen says, "Where there is no guidance, a people falls, but in an abundance of counselors, there is safety." So I love that because so many times when we're in relationships, we just want it to be between. I remember yeah. me and my ex, we it was just between us. I didn't want anyone to tell me anything because I kind of knew deep down God's like, this is not the man you're supposed to be with. But yeah. I'm like, I know other people could spot that. So if I tell them the truth about what I'm seeing, they're going to for sure say no. Mm-hmm. And God's like, that's the point. You need counselors. You need brothers and sisters to be on the outside and be like, hey, I see this about them. Not to just bash them because they don't want you to get married. Yeah. You have to be around counselors and godly people Mm -hmm. and if they see something that you don't see because when you're in love you're sometimes blinded you're just so in love Mm -hmm. infatuated Mm -hmm. with that person and that's why especially again do not give into sexual sin kissing touching and that because that just more confuses and muddles your mind but that's why i would say check up with these people let them be a part of your relationship that's why when like recording or dating you should have like have your dates and stuff like group things and be their friend first too because you and morgan Mm -hmm. were friends and i I just love that and it was Mm -hmm. and even when you guys were recording a lot of people probably didn't think you were dating or recording because it was like you were brother and sister like you were part (laughs) of our family and you were just my sister already and friend Mm -hmm. and and that's how it should be it shouldn't be like all sensual and in the darkness and and Mm -hmm. oh are we gonna are you a good kisser are we gonna be able to like live together mm-hmm. all that stuff is so worldly yeah. and satan loves yeah. that but i love god the verse that, that says yeah. exactly <laughs> trust me god that. will take care of that mm-hmm. but matthew nineteen six says so they are no longer two but one flesh therefore what god has joined together let no, no man separate mm-hmm. and that's also in mark mm-hmm. 10 9 mm-hmm. and the key is god brought it together it yeah. was made yeah. clear by god it wasn't you trying to force it because that's what i did in my past relationship mm-hmm. i forced it mm-hmm. and praise god that god used my dad and everyone else yeah. to be like hey this isn't right because yeah. in my own strength i would have married that guy and it would have yeah. been it would have been awful yeah. but because there were counselors because mm-hmm. there was my family because other people involved praise god also we we didn't kiss and we didn't touch yep. each other in that That's because the was breakup going. wasn't as hard. Yep. Cause some people breakups are awful and oh, it's like terrible it's like because they become part of you is when, leaving. Yep. The, yeah, it's like taking a part of you. So mm-hmm. just encouragement to you guys that redemption is real. Like I mean, it's so <laughs> real. Could that be the title? <laughs> yeah, redemption redemption just kidding. Is real. I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's your initials. No Revelle cap. Rotors. It's real. Yeah. 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 Rotors. Redemption is real. <laughs> and it's real because if anyone's out there and they feel like, Hey, like I have failed and I have mm-hmm. messed up or maybe there's this person you like and you feel like you've done everything to ruin it and you wouldn't be good enough. Cause right. You probably thought oh. you weren't good enough for Morgan. They yeah. were better candidates or whatever, yeah. but because you were so surrendered and submitted to God and you were like, you know what? I don't care if I don't ever get married. I just yep. want to love you, God. Yep. And you let God write your love story. Mm-hmm. Look how much more beautiful now yeah. your story is. Yeah. Instead of you were trying to like put yourself out there mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. flirt with Morgan, like these other girls did. And that didn't work. But mm-hmm. when you're surrendered to God, I just want to have encouragement to those girls out mm-hmm. there, especially like God will bring that perfect person at the perfect time. Amen. And so you just need to pursue the Lord and God will bring it together in his yeah. timing. Romans and that man, like you said, yeah, that man will pursue you yeah. when it's the right time, but you need to make sure that you are bringing others in to make sure everything's right mm-hmm. and good. And we didn't talk as much about chaperones and chaperones, <laughs> chaperones <laughs> and boundaries and accountability, <laughs> but you guys can also um, go to our Instagram at Calvary Conversations, and we're going to be doing a live Q and A after this video. Mm-hmm. Um, so you guys can go to Calvary Aura Valley or Calvary Aura Valley <laughs> at Calvary Conversations. I'll be in the description below. Yeah, subscribe to our Instagram. We'll do a live Q and A and answer some other questions that you guys might have but Veli do you have any last thoughts that you would like to share with the listeners mm-hmm. yes I would love to thank you um <laughs> so th- what I was thinking about when you were talking Mariah is Romans eight twenty eight, how God works together all things for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose mm-hmm. and it says in John 15 if you love me you will obey my commandments mm-hmm. and so 
God had given me these these truths and these words to obey, and I was disobedient for so long, for a year and a half, and um, I just put it off, and I was in anguish, I was in anxiety, but the moment I obeyed and surrendered, like Mariah's saying, surrender, the moment I repented, it was like God just, just like he he transformed <laughs> my life mm-hmm. and he does the same with all of us when we yeah. submit to him and it he's not trying to keep us from fun no. or keep us from mm-hmm. joy or keep us from peace by giving us his word yeah. he is trying to give us a life that is abundant mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. him and um whether that means marriage or not it it means peace it mm-hmm. means love it means joy it means acceptance into his family so i would just encourage you if there is something that god has been speaking to you for a while to um obey him and Amen. do it Amen. don't put it off today is the day of salvation Amen. Mm-hmm. um yeah no don't delay mm-hmm. because you could die tonight yeah. you could die in, in, in a moment yeah. we don't know when our last or last day is mm-hmm. so um just obey God and trust in him. He's your father. He loves you. He created you. Mm-hmm. He is the author of your life mm-hmm. and your love story. And um, just let go of the pen mm-hmm. and let him write it for mm-hmm. you. Amen. And really, yeah, I, I don't mean to take the ending, but no, really marriage is a picture of the church and, and God, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's not really about the marriage. You know, that's, praise God that we have that. But like in heaven, we're not going to have marriage. Yep. You know, w- instead, we're going to be married to God, right? Mm-hmm. To the Father. The church is going to. Be, and that's why we're supposed to have godly marriages. And that's why we're supposed to do things the way that God says, because it's an example to the world. The world's watching th- too. And then also people in the church. So it's not. So if you guys get anything out of this, it's it's not about you. Mm-hmm. It's not about you. It's not even about necessarily just your marriage. Mm. It's God first, and then he'll put everything uh, into place, whether that's you being single for the rest of your life. I know pe- some people are like, mm. blasphemy, right? <laughs> or maybe it's uh, being married, right? Or maybe you're just, hey, maybe you're courting, and God comes back, takes mm-hmm. us home. Yeah. You don't even get to get married, right? Yeah. But that it's not about that mm-hmm. and but if you are going to do uh have a relationship with someone uh make sure that it's godly and make sure that it's based upon what you read in mm-hmm. the scriptures amen? Amen. Yeah, amen and then i encourage everyone to literally tonight right now write this down read first corinthians chapter seven and that mm-hmm. instructs you whether you're married whether you're single mm-hmm. whether you're wanting to be married and i love verse 29 of chapter seven it says Um, But let me say this, dear brothers and sisters, the time that remains is very short. So from now on, those with with wives, Morgan has a wife, should not focus only on their marriage. And I love that because we're supposed to not focus. Morgan's not always focused. How do I please Vel? How do I please Vel? His focus is how do I please God? And in doing so, he will then be able to bless Vel. But if it's focused on Vel, 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 he's going to fail. But when you guys are both serving God, so I want you to share this too. You guys are both working worship leaders you both Mm -hmm. write music and how Mm -hmm. god brought that together too there might be someone who's maybe a godly person out there Mm -hmm. but i don't believe in the one i don't believe that there's only one person but i believe god knows what's the best for you you. that's pretty wild that you said that because you know how girls sometimes they like think of the the man that they're going to marry and Mm -hmm. they have like a list of things well i didn't really want to do that i was like god i just want what you want Mm -hmm. for me because Mm -hmm. I could d- make this list and everything, but the one thing I did think of, <laughs> and <laughs> the one thing. thing that I did say was that I want her, if it's God's will to, I want her to be able to sing yeah. and me be able to worship God with her. Mm. And that's what happens. She <laughs> sings, she plays piano, she yeah. plays a little guitar sometimes. Yeah, so, much. <laughs> yeah we, it's fun. You're teaching me. But yeah, and she writes music and hopefully we'll be able to Record make an, an album. album someday. Yeah, yeah even yes. if it's just... A simple recording, but yeah. yeah. And you guys can also that. look at our services that we have because Vel, she's the one in the back um, with the piano. She <laughs> plays piano and the Morgan's on guitar. Mm-hmm. So if you want to just listen to that, that's them. <laughs> you know, they sing there. But 
I'm thankful that we had you on, Bill. Thank Aww. you for yeah. the last Thank minute. You. Yeah. And, you yes. know, you are such a blessing. And mm. I, I just, I know that your life has already been such an inspiration to so many women, mm -hmm. especially me. So, um, and for those who are single out there, there's no, like, your flesh could see you guys and be jealous, but because you guys are so on fire for God, it makes it where we don't love your guys' relationship, right? That wasn't mm -hmm. the point of this video. Yeah. We mm -hmm. love that you guys are serving God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And All when you're serving God, God, he brings yeah. you together if he needs you to be with someone. But maybe yeah. the best for that person or for maybe me would be being single. And that's yeah. what we need to realize that we need yep. to be content exactly. whatever situation we're in. It's mm -hmm. not a situation, but if mm -hmm. you're single out there, know that you're not alone. Like you're mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. single. You have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you. And yeah. what's also so much more attractive, right, Morgan, wh what you would say about Val is that she wasn't like all boy crazy and wanting you. She was just mm -hmm. wanting God. And that's yeah. where <laughs> what's so much more attractive is when they are pursuing God and they're not like goo goo gaga, yeah. like mm -hmm. all obsessed over you. So just mm -hmm. pursue God and that right person will come at the right time. And if you're a man and you're praying about it and God's telling you, Hey, this girl, you know, she really is pursuing God. Then ha ask, mm -hmm. you know, counselors or elders mm -hmm. and stuff. And then I would encourage you to pursue her in a biblical, holy way as Amen. your sister in Christ. Amen. So that's all we have. We went a little <laughs> over, but Val, would you like to pray for us? I would l love that. All right, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day that you have made. Lord, I pray that we would rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you that you're our Father and mm -hmm. that you love us and that we don't need to believe in the lie that we're unloved or um, that we're, we can never come back to you, God, because um, you're like, like with the prodigal son, you have open arms. And so mm -hmm. we uh, just thank you for that. And I pray that we wouldn't abuse that grace, um, that we wouldn't put it off because we know you're going to be there with open arms. Um, but that we would just run to you right now, yes, God, sir. whatever it is in our lives that you've been speaking to us to obey you in, give us the grace and the strength to obey you. Like you've been teaching me about the grace and strength of God. It's, there's nothing that's good that dwells within our flesh. The only good thing that dwells in us is you Holy Spirit and so we just submit to you right now. Um, we resist the devil and thank you for the promise that he will flee from us, God. I just pray, Lord, that um, that this would speak um, to who, who you want it to speak to, God, that you would be convicting and um, use you that you would use this, uh, this time, this conversation, that you would use it for your glory, Lord. It's all about you. All the glory goes to you. And I thank you for this story that you've blessed us with, God. It, it, it's all because of you. Mm -hmm. And I just thank you so much for it, God. And so we give you this time and uh, we just, uh, we, bl we pray that you would bless all the, all the viewers that watch this, that um, you would just get a hold of their hearts, Lord, and mm -hmm. comfort them. Because I know that this area of life can be so, um, so scary, painful, confusing sometimes, um, and frustrating. But um, we just pray that you would give us all the gift of patience. We know that any area of life that we're in, we're in a time of waiting. Um, whether it's waiting for marriage, whether it's waiting for kids or a house, we're always waiting on something. So help us to wait on you, Lord. Help us to serve you yes. with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. So we love you, Lord, and we praise you. And it's in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, yes. that you, is the end. But um, Trinity, camera on me. <laughs> yeah, I'll do the outro now, Trin, and then Kevin will put it in. Thank you so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you would like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. Also, make sure to check out our behind the scenes on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. We'll also be doing a live Q&A, so you can check out in the description below to follow us on Instagram. Please make sure that you also purchase our t-shirts, mm -hmm. Calvary Conversations Woo -woo. podcast, and that will be in the description below. They're $20, and we are just so thankful to have you guys. Thanks so mm -hmm. much, and see you next week. Mm -hmm.